running is my escape, my time to myself and my time to think. Getting outside, breathing the fresh air. When I run, I'm, I'm free. I feel like I'm floating. But there was a moment three years ago when 49-year-old Sarah Whittingham thought this freedom that she loved throughout her life was over. I grew up running with my dad, ended up competing in both high school and uh, college and track. After high school, Sarah entered into the Air Force Academy. When I was at the Air Force Academy, it was only 12% women. We all felt that you had to do everything that much better than any of the guys to prove that we even still belong there. Next, she went to medical school and even found time to run her first Ironman in New Zealand. The United States Air Force, Sarah Whittingham. Soon followed by Hawaii in 2001. An Ironman triathlon is 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 mile bike, and then a 26.2 mile marathon, all back to back. She got married, did a residency in anesthesia, and had two daughters, all while remaining in the Air Force. I deployed to Afghanistan in right before Christmas of 2010. I was an anesthesiologist taking care of American and Afghani uh, nationals, and that was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life because I was leaving behind a three-year-old, sorry, <laughs> and my six-month-old daughter. After retiring from the Air Force Reserves, her family eventually settled in Ohio, where she joined Cleveland Clinic Marymount Hospital as an anesthesiologist. But in 2019, after competing in her fifth Ironman, Sarah realized something was wrong. I was tired all the time. I was stiff. My Ironman time was two hours slower, despite training harder. Then her husband John noticed a problem. I was just hanging out with my family one evening on the couch. My husband kind of looked over me and, and he said, your arm's kind of shaky. I look down and I was like, why would I have a one-sided resting arm tremor? I Googled it and you know, it was one article about Parkinson's after the other. And the more I read about it, the more I realized that I'd been having these symptoms for the last five years. Sarah's neurologist confirmed it was Parkinson's disease. There's definitely that period of denial too. Like, well, this can't be happening to me. I'm healthy, I'm active, I work out. When I look back on it, I say, like, kind of went through the stages of grief, you know, grieving for the future that I had previously seen for myself. You could see the impact. You could see the depression. You could see the anxiety. And at some point, she said, I'm going to fight this. Soon, the chance to enter into a research study would become the lifeline Sarah was searching for. Study the effects of cycling on the progression and management of Parkinson's disease. I was one of the lucky ones that was randomized to receive a Peloton. I quickly realized that the more I rode the bike, the better I felt. Like my anxiety was better, I was sleeping better, I just felt better overall. So two years after her life-altering Parkinson's diagnosis, a new dream came into focus. I watched the, the Iron Man broadcast on NBC every year. I wrote Iron Man and told them my story and told them that my dream was to uh, make it to the finish line on a Leahy Drive in Kona <laughs> again. And, uh, and I waited. <laughs> in August, Sarah got word that she had been selected to compete in Ironman Kona on the big island of Hawaii on October 14th. This will be probably the most meaningful finish line that I cross in my life. <laughs> I want to be smiling when I cross the finish line, but I'm afraid that I'll be crying my eyes out. But it, it'll be incredibly meaningful to me um, to see my husband at the finish line waiting for me and giving him a big hug and for helping me get through all of this. Okay, that what you're looking at, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is inspiration on your screen. That is Dr. Sarah Whittingham, who's with us. Yes. First of all, we are Jenna and I are in awe of you. Sitting next to you, we can feel what you've gone through and exactly where you are in this moment. Can we just start off with that? Like, how are you feeling? You're about to head off on this big adventure. You're going to Hawaii. We know what you've been through. Where are you right now? It just doesn't seem real. Yeah. Like to have this opportunity to inspire others is just yeah. such a privilege and I'm so lucky <laughs> to be able to compete in Hawaii and to hopefully bring hope to other people living with Parkinson's. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, I know, I'm crying yeah. too. I feel like in some ways competing in an Ironman, something that very few people could do, yeah. Yes. we could never. Mm -hmm. And also going through this battle with Parkinson's, yeah. it's yes. like they're a metaphor for each other. Yes. They are. Way. And they are. I'm so grateful that the one thing, my biggest passion, my biggest hobby in running and triathlons is the thing that seems to help Parkinson's 
Parkinson's the most. Yeah. And I hope to educate other physicians and Parkinson's patients the, the importance of exercise and the benefits of how much it can make a difference in every aspect of my life, not just my tremor, but also how I feel, how I sleep, my anxiety, wow. all of it. So There's a physical component to both of these things that you are battling. The Iron Man obviously is very physical and, and Parkinson's, but there's also something emotional going on in both both yeah. fights. Yes. I mean, yes. you, you to have competed that many, you have to have just a special mindset. And that same mindset is applying to you right now totally. as yes. you're fighting Parkinson's. Yes, and I, I feel like you know my years of doing triathlon and endurance racing has made me that much more mentally tough in being prepared to, to deal with this next race against Parkinson's and I just I'm just incredibly lucky you in so many would, ways. You said it would be your greatest accomplishment mm -hmm. if you could finish when, not if when, when you finish. when you finish this race yep. why why would that be? Because three years ago I didn't I pictured myself being in a wheelchair in 10 years or being you know un, being disabled and to to be able to accomplish something that I never in my wildest dreams would have thought possible is just, it, it still blows my mind. Mm -hmm. I'll be thinking of everybody else with Parkinson's yeah. as I'm out there and hoping yeah. that I, they're going to be right there with me. I so. mean, your service, your grit, your yeah. perseverance yeah. is so inspiring. And there's a group of your loved ones and colleagues that just wanted to send you a little love. So Sarah, take a, take a look. Good yeah. luck at Kona. We know you're going to crush it. We love you. Aww. Sarah, I'm so excited that you're participating this year in the Ironman and can't imagine the amount of work that it's taken to get to this point. We are cheering you all the way, and I know that you will be successful in everything that you try to accomplish. Congratulations and best of luck, and truly embody using exercise as medicine to treat Parkinson's exercise. disease. messages can just when awesome. you're sort of yeah. like a mile 22 <laughs> yes <laughs> yes they can cheer you Thank on you. Wow. you are such an inspiration to us my we gosh. love you we're so happy you're Thank here you and so you know much. you said you wanted to do this to inspire people trust us you already have <laughs> you already have Thank Thank you so Thank much you. Thank you, Sarah. all right don't forget saturday the iron man world championship you're going to hear jenna and i <laughs> all the way in kona because we're going to be cheering you on we Thank sure you yeah. so much Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thank you. Sarah.